Oh, welcome one, welcome all. We are streaming live around the world, free on YouTube, as live from the beautiful Don Quixote. We present East Los Lucha 11, Lucha Vacation. My name is Jordan Castle, so thrilled to be joined on the call for the first time ever by the incomparable Marty Quinn. Marty, what a show we have on tap for the people at home, live and free in full. Absolutely, it's one of the best deals around. East Los Lucha is always putting on an exciting show, a wide variety of wrestling styles, not just Lucha Libre, but we have a packed and stacked card tonight. For the 11th time, we are bringing our unique brand of Lucha Libre to each and every single one of you. We know it's been a busy day in the world of professional wrestling, and we appreciate you closing out your night with us. Marty, we're starting things off with a match that wasn't anticipated, wasn't, wasn't scheduled, wasn't advertised, but we here at East Los Lucha, we love to give you a little bit something more. That's a Matter of fact, that is correct. This was a very late scheduled match, but we're so grateful that all of you could be in here with us today to witness this incredible match to kick us off. Making their way to the ring, we've got Inferno Abdul versus Oscar Manuel Phoenix. And this is going to be a firecracker of an opening match. I, I see what you did there, Inferno Firecracker. It makes sense. That is correct. It adds up. I am subtly influenced by imagery. And the crowd not taking a shine to Abdul just to start off with. Abdul, of course, with a very impressive performance back at East Los Lucha 9, Lucha Hangover, in our opening contest that evening, hoping to follow that momentum up tonight with another win against Oscar. Abdul, absolutely a powerhouse, and he's got the size advantage here and the strength advantage. <laughs> With the ring introductions from the one and only Pinky Santino out of the way, it is time for our opening contest. Oscar Abdul one on one. And one has to think, I mean, take nothing away from Oscar, but the advantage is clearly in favor of Abdul. Clearly looking at the physicality here. The physicality tells the entire story at the beginning of this match. Abdul is a mountain, is a wall that Oscar has to climb. He's going to have to break him down piece by piece, work him over with the ring intellect, with his mobility and find an angle to come in and find that advantage. Because if it's a straight one-to-one -one powerhouse, Abdul, and through Abdul's pocket win. And the bell sounds and we are underway. Perhaps, Marty, you are omnipotent because that, it, it, it seems to be exactly what Oscar's doing here in the early going, trying to neutralize that power with that speed, trying to take Abdul off his game with that high-flying quickness. I only know all things. I'm not capable of all things. But yes, we can see it Felix goes up right and over. Balance there. Followed up with a gorgeous Lucha arm drag here at our bonus opener at Lucha Vacation. This has been all Oscars thus far. That's right, he's trying to set the tempo, and he's trying to set it at a quick pace and keep Abdul off of his feet. A wheelbarrow arm drag there, really finding a, a, a numerous positions to hit those arm drags here. And now, taking to the top, looking to take to the skies, perhaps. Trying to find a correct angle, the best way to come at his problem. Because again, head on is danger. And here we see, a, oh my goodness, Hurricane Rana right into the ring post. Yeah, you know, it is a common misconception that the ring apron is the hardest part of the ring, Marty. That is not correct. It is, in fact, the ring post. Cold, hard, unforgiving steel. And if you're talking about the posts that we use here at East Los Lucha, they have edges, they have ridges, but this might hurt a little bit more. Tope, oh. Suicida cut in midair, and this time, Oscar gets a taste of his own medicine as his back 
is drilled into that aforementioned post. That ring post payback, his spine was perfectly aligned. I could see all, what is it, 12 vertebrae just making perfect contact with that corner of the post. Perfectly or perhaps imperfectly aligned as we take another look, gorgeous Tope Suicida caught in midair and then in slow motion oh, drilled. Oh, cover here. Abdul nearly steals it off the replay. Yeah, I see what you mean. Perfect positioning, the spine of the back. Not the left side, not the right side, right down the middle. Maximum pain to Oscar here. On what level it feels, that seems like it would crack your back in a very satisfying way, but- you know, Satisfying? Not if you're not walking after. You think that's satisfying? There are a lot of wrestling holds that I think would make a very satisfying stretch. Well, this is not a chiropractic appointment. This is a professional wrestling match at Inferno Abdul proving thus. He may not be a chiropractor, but he's going to send Oscar Felix to the doctor. And now, stopping a mud hole in him here. Not making very many friends in the audience, but in friends are not as important as wins. Inferno Abdul is a scary individual. You, you cross eyes with him in the locker room. You see him, you see him manhandling a grown man. Just a one-arm scoop down to the mat with authority. And this could be the whole story here. One, two, only a two count here. Now, as I was saying, I mean, he is a domineering, frightening individual. The man has a smile on his face after a power slam with that much ferocity. Tells you everything you need to know. And we can tell you more about what is coming up tonight. We have a heck of a card lined up for you. We've got Kodo Hero going up against Wicked Wicked. We're going to see some tag team action as 24K faces the Doom Barbies. And oh, Abdul running in with that elbow straight to the jaw. And later on, we are going to see Eli Everfly de defend the Cruiserweight Championship against Paradox. I'll tell you what, Inferno Abdul, he's about as far away from a Cruiserweight as you get. But Oscar may be finding his way back in this thing. Tilt to whirl action, followed up with a huge elbow to the throat. And another for good measure. Outstanding. Once again, it's finding that opening. A moment of weakness can turn the tide. And we have an opening here. Atomic drop. I don't care how big you are. That hurts like hell. And now Oscar perhaps no. looking to seal the deal. Slice spread the, number two. The road to El Dorado, he calls it, in the cover. Two. No. Oh. Well, it might have been the road to El Dorado, but it was not, in fact, the road to victory here tonight. He's got a lot more <laughs> miles to cover on that golden path. But he is well on his way. Oscar has found a second wind. He's found his way back in this thing, perhaps looking for a knee strike here. He, uh, oh, oh, spear! Clipped out of his stance and dropped out of his pants. I don't know if he's gonna be able to stand up after that. Out of nowhere there from Inferno Abdul, and we've seen oh. this before. It's academic Flame now. Flame thrower. Those suplexes of Abdul tell the tale. That's all three. Inferno Abdul, dominant as ever. Another opening contest and another victory for the big man here at East Los Lucha. His aggression is unmatched, that power is unmatched, and those suplexes, he's, he practices them night and day. They will stop you in your tracks, just like Oscar Manuel Felix has found out tonight. He found out the hard way. And fans, as you heard Marty run through, we have a spectacular card on tap. Championship action with Eli Everfly defending against Paradox. However, uh, we, we regret to inform you that our scheduled championship match between Matt Vandegriff. We'll get back to that. I swear Pinky Santino does it on purpose. God love him. Singles action on tap. Robbie Phoenix taking on Diablo Azteca. But as I was saying, our scheduled heavyweight championship match, the first heavyweight championship match of one Lucha scumbag Chris Nasty against Matt Vandegriff will not be taking place tonight. The aerial chemist unable to make it. We hope to have Matt back very, very soon. But Chris Nasty seemingly without an opponent tonight. 
Chris Nasty is in the house, but we will be determining who he will be facing at our next show, as there is a, still a number one contendership match between the former champ, Doble Cara, and Blood Eagle, and that promises to be vicious. Before we can get to that, it is Diablo Azteca, a seasoned veteran over a decade in the game. But he's facing someone, if you can believe it, Marty, with double his experience. He's got a decade, his opponent tonight has two. This is absolutely going to be a clash of the titans. Some very classical mat work here going to be displayed. Two people who have been not just around Southern California, but various countries and have put their skills on the line. It's gonna be great to see them go head to head. We talked about the road to El Dorado in our last contest. These men have traveled up and down countless roads and they have brought them here tonight. East Los Mutual of 11, easy for me to say, live from the Don Quixote in singles action. And coming off of a thundering victory from the last show, uh, in a fatal four-way match, Robbie Phoenix here looking to continue this uh, momentum that he's got. And wrestling, once again, Jordan, all about momentum. You know, you, you would think that it's maybe harder to defeat three men uh, as opposed to one. Scientifically, uh, ma mathematically, that would stand to be correct, but I might argue against that. Robbie Phoenix, very impressive victory in that fatal four-way back at East Los Lucha 10. There is no doubt about it, but you gotta think his opponents were, were softened up by each other. Here tonight against Diablo Azteca, Robbie Phoenix has to do all the legwork. He cannot rely on any big moves from any other opponents to assist him tonight. Less of a chance of Diablo Azteca taking his eyes off the prize. And yes, Robbie Phoenix is gonna have to put in the work, but I don't think we're worrying about anyone being softened. Iron sharpens iron. As we once again throw it to Pinky Santino for the official ring introduction. And I'll ask you, Marty, Diablo Azteca, Robbie Phoenix, who do you personally give the edge to? Both world travelers, both seasoned veterans, but something's gotta give. Absolutely correct. Both of these fighters are going to be putting on an excellent display, but as I said before, wrestling is so much about momentum, and Robbie Phoenix has been on a tear lately. He is the current and longest reigning Native Ways Entertainment Champion and half of their tag team championship right now as well. He has traveled across the world, like you mentioned, Japan, Europe. He, is, he has been extremely victorious lately, and I don't know what's gonna derail that train. Perhaps it will be Diablo Azteca. Only time will tell, the bell is sounded, and we are indeed underway. And also Robbie Phoenix, you cannot forget, this is definitely a hometown advantage for him. Fighting out of East Los Angeles, we got to precisely where we are, and I think that that crowd energy is going to get, put him over the line. Clearly the crowd favorite here, as it seems like Diablo Azteca asking for perhaps a test of strength, but again, this, this is no popularity contest. I love Robbie Phoenix. What's not to love about Robbie Phoenix, but cheers and chants and adulation from the people, it's not gonna get you a W. No, it won't get you all the way there, but it'll definitely make the difference when it's, you know, knuckles down. That's not a phrase. Well, it seems as if Diablo Azteca looking to lock knuckles here with Robbie Phoenix, but Phoenix, a little ginger. A little ginger or just not necessarily willing to play by Azteca's rules. 
I think he's trying to be the one in command and control. And it does not like being told what to do. Indeed, he is in command right now, taking us, taking to the mat. But Azteca more than happy to return the favor here. Monkey flip, taking Phoenix down. Both shoulders counted down. These men have got to be careful. Do not want to see a double pinfall this early on in the contest here, Marty. Absolutely not. But again, you mentioned their veteran experience. I don't, it would be an incredibly embarrassing way to end a match for either oh. of these men. Oh, Crucifix here gets caught. But we can see Robbie adapt for another pinning predicament. Covers left and right, shoulders down at every possible second. I mean, these men not giving each other an inch here. It shows their own ring awareness. Cover once again from Phoenix as well as how much they respect and acknowledge one another. They want to finish this as quickly as possible because they know if they don't, it's going to be very, very dangerous for them. Absolutely. They do not want to make this a grueling match if they can help it. Phoenix ducks the clothesline, goes for one of his own. Diablo, but a, stere drop a stereo drop kick there, and both men find their way to their feet. Good heart-pumping start to this match. Getting the audience hooked in, look, starting to raise the stakes a little bit. Robbie trying to stay calm and collected. I mean, listen, that's 20 plus years of experience, numerous championship accolades as you listed. You don't have a career like that. You don't have a career like Robbie Phoenix has had without a certain level of, of composure in big match situations. Professional nonchalance, as it were. He is, I think, go on. He's cool as a cucumber. I, there wasn't a lot of journalistic uh, uh, meat to that, my friend. You go on. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking both of these competitors here, now we can see Azteca taking his time with some jumping jacks and calisthenics. Both of these men are still feeling each other out. You can tell with that, that test of strength, that test of uh, covers just now, that exchange. I don't know if either one of these men has that full confidence advantage like they often do going into a matchup. We saw, against a lesser versed opponent. We saw the jumping jacks and the calisthenics, perhaps shades of things to come with Delilah Doom teaming in with Barbie Boy a little bit later on tonight against 24K. That is correct, the Doom Barbies are quite a chemical combination. Hold so, on, oh. Robbie Phoenix ducks the kick there, ducks a line from Diablo Azteca. Head scissors, takes him down once again. You wouldn't necessarily look at Robbie Phoenix. He's very oh. tall, he's very lanky. You wouldn't necessarily expect his athleticism if you've never seen it before, but he has it in spades on display here. And another head scissors now. After some mocking calisthenics, maybe he's taking it a bit personally. I mean, look at the physique for a man Robbie Phoenix's age. No disrespect intended. He clearly prioritizes his physical conditioning here. I once asked Robbie Phoenix's age and he broke my fingers. And looking to break the face of Diablo Azteca but the boot gets caught. Uh-oh, watch out folks. Looks like he's planning him on the- Oh no! Oh my God. We talked about the ring post. We talked about how deadly and unforgiving it is and Robbie Phoenix just got it in the proverbial nether regions, the Marty. Most, most difficult place to take the most difficult part of the ring. I, I am no professional wrestler. I have never laced up a pair of boots. I have never taped my wrists. I have never stepped foot in a professional wrestling ring and I would never claim to. But I, I think I can confidently say that that hurts a lot. Same here. I have some least favorite places to be hurt. That's, that's, that's high on the list, my yeah. friend. And just, just like that, Diablo Azteca back in firm control here. Rolling Phoenix back in the ring, he doesn't seem to be able to get back to his feet. Diablo Azteca, of course, literally translating to the Aztec devil here. Some demonic offense. I think he's found a bruise there on uh, Robbie Phoenix's left thigh. Oh, you think that's where the bruise is? Yeah, deep on the left thigh. Something tells me the bruise might be elsewhere after that shot with the post, but. Maybe his hip? but it seems like that's where he's pressing the advantage now. Maybe. Wherever it is, Phoenix is having a hard time walking. Diablo Azteca here now, bringing Robbie Phoenix up to a vertical base. I question this strategy. It's not often you get someone like Phoenix down, but paying off for Azteca here. What a great takedown takeover. And now this stretch. Oh. Unbelievable submission offense on display from Diablo Azteca here. Oh. He's marching Robbie Phoenix around. Look at this. Driving his face into the mat, dangling in the. Ow! Oh! And a submission hold like that, there is torque on every single limb. Both arms, both legs. 
into a pitting predicament, perhaps. Hook of the leg. That's, wants the win here. Two and oh. Kick out there from Robbie Phoenix. And as I was saying, there, there's joint manipulation on the arms and the legs. Every submission hold from a competitor like Diablo Azteca is going to hurt. But when there's that much damage on that many body parts, it is just cranked to the max. And it makes you almost wonder why you would ever let go of a, of a position like that. But that stomp into the mat is authoritarian and will absolutely magnify and multiply all of that pain. Well, Diablo Azteca, for all the frills, for all the aggression, he is a thinking man's wrestler. Perhaps he sensed that Robbie Phoenix was, was wriggling his way out of dodge. Perhaps he sensed that he was losing control of that hold and he thought, I'm going to get ahead of this before Robbie Phoenix has the, the chance to get back in this thing, as he very well may be doing now. I'm going to release the hold of my own accord. Yes, Robbie Phoenix manages to escape after getting his shoulders stretched out once again. Trying to and follow it up, but caught by Diablo Azteca and deposited face first on the mat. This could be it. Unfortunate splash no. to a, oh boy, so close. So close and yet so far. And Diablo Azteca, he may be wearing that mask, but Marty, I say you can sense the shock, the bewilderment, and dare I say, the frustration despite that face covering. My first instincts at the beginning of this match, Robbie oh, Phoenix being a, a favorite of mine, I, I may be backing away from the confidence of that statement as Phoenix finds himself in another submission hold. Taking Robbie Phoenix surfing here, but gets caught in a pinning predicament, could steal it, no. And you gotta think perhaps Diablo Azteca, a student of the game, no doubt studied East Los Lucha 10 kick-ass Lucha, saw Robbie Phoenix pick up the victory in that fatal four-way, did his homework, clearly pay it off here. But a sit-out drop kick there from Robbie Phoenix. Might be all he needs to find his way back in. Those shots to the knee, that absolute momentum changers. Like Robbie experienced earlier with his left thigh, if you can't use that leg, you can't get to your feet. Well, he's using that leg all right. He is causing a decisive amount of damage to asking Diablo. For, asking for one more from the audience. Sanctifies this last one. Oh, you gotta give the people what they want, but it might have cost him as Diablo catches the kick. And a shot right to the mush. Forearm shiver has Robbie Phoenix looking dizzy. But he's too quick. Sick kick there from Phoenix has Diablo looking dizzy. And now both men are down. A great showing from both men, now pushing each other to the limit, trying to find an advantage, someone to really press a momentous advantage here. Well, and Marty, one has to think whoever is able to make it up to their feet first has a decided disadvantage. We are at least 10 minutes into this thing. Robbie Phoenix, Diablo Azteca, gets the, the arm draped over. Yes. Desperation maneuver there does not get the win. Whoever is able to make it up to a vertical base first, you have to give the edge to. If you can press that advantage, you can continue to work on your opponent on the mat, which is never the advantageous position. And it looks like Phoenix here trying to take control for sure. Azteca fighting out. Yeah, we saw some high frills, lucha offense, some aerial offense in the early going. All of that has gone out the window. They are slugging it out here. Nice uppercut there from Azteca. Going one for one now with these blows. Forearm shiver exchange. These forearm shivers are making me shiver. My goodness. <laughs> oh, Robbie Phoenix on spaghetti legs, but manages to bounce off the ropes. Not going quietly into the night. But Phoenix now getting ahead of steam. Caught with that high knee. Big jump in knee. Azteca. Will he be able to follow it up? Goes off the ropes, but gets caught with a huge spin kick from Phoenix. Once again, both men laid out flat on the mat, trying to catch their breath, but now Phoenix a little faster on this cover. Hooks the leg. Could be all. Only a two. And now we can see the disbelief on Robbie Phoenix's face. Yeah, they say a picture tells a thousand words. Robbie Phoenix. He's, he's, he's a popular fan favorite here in SoCal. You saw the smile on his face. He's a beloved fixture in any locker room, but the frustration is eminent here. And Phoenix perhaps looking to finish things. Oh, ducks the Enziguri. Now Phoenix once again caught in this leg trap. Took a little too much time, and it might be the only opportunity Azteca needs. 
another submission hold. Gets his chin up off the map. Romero special cinched in, and Phoenix may have no choice but to tap if he can. I'm not sure he even has arms or hands available. I, th I think he just cries uncle. Well, he's not crying anything. Phoenix using that lanky figure to make his way back down to the canvas. As Tekka now locking in the chin hold, going for all the more intensity on that angle of wrenching. But it looks like... Hold on, hold on. Did he, did he, he's got his fingers trapped there, did Azteca. I, maybe he, he pinched his own fingers, or... Again, that is the joint manipulation of a veteran like Robbie Phoenix. Whatever he did, it got him out of dodge, if only for the moment. There might have been some teeth involved, but it's hard for me to say. If referee Charlie Wu doesn't call it, I'm not about to make any speculation. Well, and again, with, with how far these athletes have pushed each other, with what a spectacular matchup this has been between Phoenix and Azteca, you get the official maybe going to play it a little fast and loose. No one wants to see this one end in a disqualification. Not after everything we've oh! seen. Oh! And Phoenix pays the price with the shoulder into the post. Azteca. Followed up with a high knee once again from Azteca, the man who recently returned from a debut in Guadalajara, Mexico, hoping to follow up momentum of his own, and he's taken Phoenix to the top. This cannot be good for Robbie. Matches are decided by these top rope maneuvers, these things in the high rent district. High risk, high reward. What has Azteca got in mind, and will he be able to execute it? Think it's superplex, perhaps. Again, this is always a dangerous place to be, but especially at this juncture, especially after everything these men have put each other through. So many pinning attempts, so many close calls so far. Robbie Phoenix used, putting his head to good use. That was a close call for Phoenix. Phoenix has the space. He has the momentum and the energy. Oh, but he's caught before he can execute off that second rope. He just got his head snapped, his neck snapped against that turnbuckle here. Azteca, he's signaling for it. Diablo looking to fly. But again, going to that top rope, the time investment it takes. Phoenix now has him in hell of a predicament. He's got his neck tucked against the turnbuckle with that super, super kick. Super kick, but somehow Diablo stays on the ropes. What is he thinking? He oh. stay on the ropes this time. Yeah. One, two, three, Phoenix with a huge win. Almost a springboard sunset bomb there from Robbie Phoenix. Clenched him another victory. Let's take Maybe another look. It. Yeah. Oh, thud. Slapping down like a flapjack onto the mat. Unbelievable. Like a Phoenix, Robbie indeed rising from the ashes that were the offense of one Diablo Azteca. Take absolutely nothing away from Azteca. This was anyone's ball game. But tonight, the experience, the seasoning of the veteran Made all the difference. Correct, Amundo. Looking forward to see what Azteca has at our next showing, the next time he comes through for East Los Lucha. Of course, the next time we'll be back here at the Don Quixote will be on October 8th. Lucha de los Muertos, our Halloween spectacular. And you mentioned a number one contendership match happening tonight to determine who will challenge Chris Nasty for that title. Coming up on October 8th, that is correct, Doble Cara, the former champion, just recently deposed by Chris Nasty, looks to get another shot back, but he'll have to go through Blood Eagle tonight to find out who's getting that first crack at Chris Nasty. And, and Marty, I'm getting, I'm getting word in our headset right now. I, I understand that Chris Nasty is scheduled to speak. The champion is in the building, and we will be hearing from him next. That is exciting to hear, yes, especially we want to see that newly crowned champ. It'd be disappointing to not even catch a glimpse of that title belt. Well, and it's holder. We, we want to see the championship. We want to see the championship defended. But after his, his recent actions, I, I can honestly say I'd be OK not seeing Chris Nasty. It's more about what the championship represents. Absolutely, absolutely. These fans, both watching free and live streaming on YouTube around the world and here at the Don Quixote, they deserve a championship match. But I'm not sure if Chris, if Chris Nasty deserves that championship. Well, it's not about who deserves it, it's about who takes it here in the world of professional wrestling. Chris Nasty certainly took it unceremoniously from Doble Cara back at East Los Lucha 10, kick-ass Lucha.
again scheduled to defend against the aerial chemist Matt Vandegrift. Matt unable to join us. We send him our best. We hope to have him back soon. We'll hear from Nasty about what that means for the championship here tonight. Give me a break. They, making Pinky say that it's his honor. I mean, what are we doing here, Marty? Again, it's about what the championship represents. It is kind of an honor just to see anybody holding that belt. I, again, but Chris Nasty has such a nasty attitude. Forgive the pun. Turning his back on Doblecata, turning his back on the fans, turning his back on East Los Lucha. I was as big a Chris Nasty fan as you will ever find. And, and make no bones about it, he is an excellent athlete. But these actions as of late, turning his back on Doble Cata, turning his back on the fans, turning his, turning his back on East Los Lucha, I, I can't excuse it. You know, say what you will, but just when he enters the room, I get this kind of tingling sensation, just seeing him with that belt. And it might be the bass from his music, rattling my chair and making me feel things awaken inside of me. But it also might just be that championship presence. He's got an attitude that says, I deserve this. And whether you agree with it or not, he carries that belt with a sort of pride that's undeniable. Nasty returning from a potentially career-threatening injury back at East Los Lucha 9, Lucha Hangover, to extract a measure of revenge against Big Dick Hoss Hog. That same night, turning on Doble Cata. And the rest is history. I liked it better when the lights were off. I liked it better <laughs> when we couldn't see him. Oh, 
Obligated. The champion has obligations. It's not all wine and roses. Hold on. From behind. Don't let Kara doesn't see it coming, but cut off at the heels by Blood Eagle. That's it. Oh my goodness, he's gonna keep his phone. It's nasty cell phone. I sure hope he has Apple Care on that thing. <laughs> 
Could we see a new East Los Lucha heavyweight champion tonight? The reclamation of Doble Cara, the crowning of Blood Eagle, or will Chris Nasty weasel his way out of his first championship defense, still reigning and defending? The stakes were already entirely high for Blood Eagle, for Doble Cara, and now they just got higher and more immediate. Chris Nasty thought he was gonna be skating on easy street today. But now it looks like his title is threatened by not one, but two very serious competitors. Despite the name of the show, it will be no luchification for Chris Nasty. Yeah. a couple of changes that have occurred tonight. Of course, Matt Vandegriff unable to compete against Chris Nasty, leading to this triple threat. Unfortunately, El Primo Genio Trabeca's scheduled opponent in the form of SoCal Crazy, also unable to appear here tonight at East Los Lucha 11. We send our very best to SoCal Crazy. Hope to have him back in the fold very, very soon. But again, that leaves Primo Genio without an opponent. That is the case, but he's still making an appearance. He's coming to the ring. So maybe he knows something that we don't. I mean, I mean, as far as as far as I'm concerned, Marty, we are we are in the dark right now. Primo Hanyo seems dressed to compete. Vicky Santino says that we have a, a match coming up. One can only put two and two together. One can only deduce. And Primo Hanyo will be in action. And hey, come on, not high fiving the child. What a monster! Unforgivable. You know, I was ready to be impressed because of the cool way he threw his coat onto the ring rope. That was very cool. Yeah. Very stylish, but he can't go that extra couple of inches to complete the high five. That's just lazy. And I guess cruel. Cruel to the child. They say you gotta be cruel to be kind, but I'm, I'm not so sure. I don't think that's his goal. I think no. it's just cruel to be cruel. Hold on. Marty, I... I I know that music. Oh, I don't know. It can't be who I oh, think wait. it is. Oh, I do know this music. The modern Spartan Jordan Cruz has arrived in East Los Lucha. Well, Marty, they say expect the unexpected. Jordan Cruz nowhere to be seen emotional material that seems as if someone had to step up to the plate. The modern Spartan, apparently the man for the job. Jordan Cruz is a known protege of SoCal Crazy, who has made themselves known throughout, like the whole Southern California region has trained plenty of people. Jordan Cruz is one of those acolytes, one of those students. It's, in, it's amazing and imperative to see him step up and fill in for his mentor. Perhaps SoCal Crazy giving him the Iggy, saying, hey, buddy, I'm not gonna, not gonna make it here tonight. Pick your spot, find your moment. Unfair rug pull for Primo Henny. To come up for the fans.
I'll tell you what, Marty, if this was a bodybuilding contest, these two would be neck and neck. Two of the best physiques in independent professional wrestling today. But it's not just about how they look, it's about how they can go. And suffice it to say, both of these men can. Wrestling is a convoluted alchemy, and not the least of which is that sort of, that appearance, the way you connect with the crowd, but most of it is applied physics, and I think that's what we're about to see, is this test of strength between two very equally matched competitors. Well, we know who the crowd favorite is. The surprise entrance of one Jordan Cruz. Again, expect the unexpected here in East Los Angeles. Jockeying for position here in the early goings are Primo and Cruz. Uh, Primo and Cruz are two guys, really. Primo especially, as Cruz has, has really had a renaissance, has really uh, co co come into his own over the course of the last year or so. But really, both of these men uh, are hidden gems of our scene, are, 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 are hidden gems of Southern California professional wrestling. They are so good, and they have been so good for quite a while now. And I think all you need is that one breakout performance, that one breakout match, or that one breakout victory to prove to the entire world what us select few know. And perhaps that's what Primo Hedman is looking for. And I think that what we have, if we're fortunate, that's what we're gonna be seeing here tonight. As oh, we shoulders see down. Hanio, look at that creativity though from uh, Primo Hedman with this grip that he's got on him. Again. Stretching those quads out. Bruce has gotta be very, very careful. Oh, again. And another pity. He's got you coming and going there with the pinning predicament and the stretching of that. Call him pinning predicament primo. PQ, yes. cover again from Cruz. Pinfall attempts fast and furious. Attempts to Snapmare, followed up with the Maestro Cradle here. Another cover, no luck. Cruz ducks the line. Primo ducks the line. Both men meet in the middle of the boots. Both boots caught. A stalemate, perhaps. Can they find a peaceful resolution here? Sportsmanship. Never say professional wrestling is lacking. All right, very good. Two frogs and no scorpion there. Jordan Cruz. Those aren't frogs. Those are men. Those are those are human beings. Human men, is it? Okay. Yes. yes. Let me clean my glasses off. No riveting. Oh, they're yes. Good. They're not green. Come on. With a standing switch, gets behind, takes an elbow to the jaw. He's getting his belt oh, on a little bit with man. a chop to the chest. Leather meat flesh there from Primo Henyo. But Jordan Cruz following it up, knee to the gut, chop to the chest of his own. A little bit of a taste of Primo's own medicine, perhaps. You're absolutely right when you say that both of these uh, competitors are hidden gems of the scene. Jordan Cruz, powerful. He is built, he is a powerhouse, but that does not stop him from being agile, being quick on his feet, like you see here. Up and over, look at the elevation, followed up with a huge German suplex, nearly depositing Primo outside of the ring. Could be over before it started, but Primo kicks out. And I gotta say, clearly as we see here, the, these are not show muscles on Jordan Cruz, these are go muscles, Marty Quinn. Yes, it's not just doing the glamour stuff. Oh, oh thinking Olympus slam. But pulled out of it with that arm drag. Quite a bit of torque on Cruz's arm. Might have bent it out of shape there, and Primo capitalizing with a head scissors. Beautiful work. Primo Henio, again, he's got one of the fastest working minds. I've been so impressed with this young defender, with his ring awareness and intelligence, finding every opening and advantage right there to Primo change it up. Landing on his feet off that hip toss. Gets caught and Cruz into an incendiary kick. And now Cruz. Caught with that hip toss back breaker. Oh, and a cover, only one, just barely one. Again, that speaks to the tenacity of Jordan Cruz, that Primo can hit him with that much and still only come away with a one count. Oh, going for a, sort of a neck breaker maneuver, but then fight out of it. Power, Power slam. slam! This might be it. Oh my. No. Cruz with just that one count cover a moment ago, now taken almost to the full three. And that's just how fast it can change. Well, one also has to think that Cruz is used to being the bigger man in most contests. I'm not sure if that's the case against Primo. Physically, these men are pretty evenly matched. 
Hold on, Cruz doing everything he can to escape the uh, wrist lock, it seems, of oh. Primo Hegno. Oh, headbutt to the injured right bicep of Cruz, it seems. Cover. Another cover. And that's what I mean by Primo Hegno using his head. Not literally, but I just think he saw that opening, and it almost looked like he was losing his footing, and he said, you know what I can do right here? Headbutt. And he found a weak spot and attacked. He also literally did use his head. Well, look, I mean, yes, that is the obvious word. But I'm just trying to highlight the, the fact that he's quick on his feet and quick with his mind. He, he is a cerebral wrestler. Listen, for all the guff that we give Primo Henio about he, his ego, his hubris, he is a thinking man's wrestler. He's proven just that. Neckbreaker oh. taking down Cruz. Much of that ego is well deserved. Cover. Cover. Two. Only a two. And this is where you see that inexperience of Primo Henio come into play. Only five years in the game. That inexperience will lead to him when he should be capitalizing on a down cruise. Are going to be official, mocking the fans. If Primo can focus, I think he would be the biggest thing in independent wrestling. I truthfully believe that. One day, he will deserve everything that he thinks he does. And that's once his record catches up with his attitude. And a victory against Jordan Cruz. What would be his first in East Los Lucha would go a very long way in cementing that, so long as he doesn't get himself disqualified. Of course, yeah. And if you're Jordan Cruz, Marty, I mean, I, what do you have to find your way back in this thing? Oh, my goodness. That's a good start. I struck Mayo once again. Only a two. And you talk about bring awareness and every action time, and it's all about finding that unexpected moment. We'll talk about finding your moment. Primo Hanyo found a boot across the face of Cruz. Irish rips him into the opposite corner. And a huge wow. drop kick, picture perfect from Primo. Sinks it in deep. And now Primo Henio sending him across again into the turnbuckle. Trying to get a chance started for himself. Uh, uh, unsuccessfully, I might add. Oh! And took a second too long trying to get that chance started. Allowed Jordan Cruz to find his way back into this thing. And now it's a burn, it's a plate, it's a spot! Oh! Lee Moly! into that first row. And the Don Quixote's disco ball roof may have nearly blown off its hinges. Folks, we wish you could be here with us. See this instant replay. A, a man that size should not be able to fly with that sort of elevation and ease. It, it, it scientifically should not be possible. It is a dangerous side of beef to see coming at you through the air like that. You know that old Wendy's commercial, Where's the Beef? Coming at you. I think we found it. And now Cruz staggering to his feet. You got to wonder. You mentioned high risk, high reward as he clutches that lower back. Did, did that dive to the outside perhaps take as much out of him as it did Primo? I'm not sure. Well, he's dragging Primo Henio to his feet. So if he can just get this cover, it looks like he might still have it. The advantage pressed. Is it, is it Modelo time? Uh-oh. It's Modelo time! I think I just saw his biceps swell up, and I hear the Popeye feed. That's not spinach! Oh, my goodness! Flying forearm here, willed on by the Modelo into that an Olympus slam! And into the roll-up. He's, He's got more in store. Shining oh. wizard! The cover. And two, no! Wow! Jordan Cruz feeling his oats, feeling his barley and his balls and his hops. Catapulting himself to the outside. Flying forearm, Olympus slam, and shining wizard. Still not enough to put Primo Henry away. And a splash of Modelo. Right. Cruz now, I think, he looks like he's playing to the crowd, but I uh -oh. think he's just plotting. No, the execution. I, I think Jordan Cruz is looking for that signature uh, everybody gets superplexed here. Trying to dispose the little of what's left of El Primo Henio to Rebecca. But that's a lot of man to muscle up, Marty. This angle, this maneuver, always so dangerous, and, but so worth it when it connects. It he will not. have it in the bag. It does not seem as if it will connect today. Headbutt from Primo. And now Cruz off his feet, stuck in the middle of the ring. Primo with the springboard kick. Beautiful connection right to the jaw. Will it be enough? No, he's, oh, no, he's not going for the cover. And now he and is. Yeah, there it is. 
and, and perhaps the momentary hesitation, the, the, the momentary thought from Primo is what cost him. It seemed like he was gonna go for more offense, then opted for the cover. If he had gone for the cover right away, Cruz might be down, but now with the jumping knee followed up with the mule kick, this one still continues. Trading blows and kicks now. Primo, he's got it in. Oh, board buster in store. And now Primo off the rope, spear! That could be all again. He goes in for the roll One, for the legs. Two, two, no! Man, oh man, El Primo Angel to Rebecca, much like Cruz before him, hitting his opponent with everything, but still coming up short. What a clash we are seeing between two very valiant warriors. Primo Henio now is starting to feel that wall, hit that wall that he tends to get to, that frustration place. He, that ego, when it doesn't get fed the way that he expects, it can take him to some dark places, and here's hoping that it can take him to a victory. And Marty, I don't know if you saw the corner of our screen, that glove's coming off. It's a signature of Primo. He, he's looking to end this thing. Oh, but Cruz, trying to control it, drops the weight down. But Primo Henio is probably just gonna have to muscle through this and toss him like a rag doll. Again, Cruz with the weight distribution keeping that center of gravity low. Much easier said than done on behalf of El Primo Henio Trabeca. Repeated Kawada kicks there, trying to soften Cruz up. And now perhaps thinking a last day, Angel. He won't get sent back the third oh, time, but he'll Cruz. get the small package. Looking, looking to steal it, but unable to do so. The small package, some might say, is a, is a desperate maneuver, but I just think it's a clever one. If you find that opening, take it. And now both men on the outside, trading blows over the turnbuckle. Yeah, nothing desperate about this. Cruz. Oh, Cruz. He's looking for it again. Has sights. Everybody gets superplexed. One, two, and no. Oh, my goodness. But immediately he stays on transitioning. Top. Immediately. You're absolutely right, Marty. Stays on top into the cross face. Center of the ring. Nowhere for Primo Henry to go. So many other wrestlers will start to breathe that sigh of relief at two and a half seconds. But not Jordan Cruz. He stayed right. His head in the game. And as soon as he felt it twitch, he kept Primo Henio. Primo, now, he's muscling those bottom ropes. Will he make it? And he does. But Jordan Cruz still now. And again, you talk about immediately transitioning. No wasted motion from Cruz. Right back into the ankle lock. Right back into the center of the ring. But Primo able to wiggle his way out of dodge. As soon as, as, soon as Primo's hands were off of the rope, he just took the next available. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Jumping me! Cruz wanting to follow up, but Henio dips off the ropes. He's calling for it. Oh! oh. Tank driver! Oh. 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 With a brain buster float over! Primo oh. Henio defeats oh. Jordan Cruz! And, and it, almost an upset. I mean, Marty goes without saying that it is an upset. Jordan Cruz is a former United Wrestling Network television champion, held that title for 175 days. He's a former San Diego Pro Wrestling Champion, former NPW Tag Team Champion. We've seen him across the West Coast and beyond as we take another look at the move that finished the man who all those accolades belong to. If you see that move, those accolades mean nothing when your head hits the mat at that kind of angle. And El Primo Henio celebrating the East Los Lucha ring for the first time. Notching his first victory in East Los Lucha. And what a victory it is. Perhaps a proverbial changing of the guard. Primo Henio and Rebecca victorious against Cruz. And a hell of a show we've had so far. Uh, is he going to redeem himself here? He's asking for it. Oh, now he gets stuck. Oh. Whoa. Okay. A show of respect here from Jordan Cruz. But I think wisely staying out of arm's reach. Yeah, respect does not mean that these guys like each other. Let's, let's make that perfectly clear. Oh. For a second, it looked like he was trying to win some respect from the fans. But should have known better. Yeah. Fans, in a little bit, we are going to take a brief, and I mean brief intermission, so stick with us through that. But beforehand, 
have a little uh, singles action on tap between two of the most impressive high flyers in East Los Lucha. You said it. This is going to be a high energy attack, an all out assault between Kodo Hero and Wicked Wicked. And I cannot wait. Set out. Anyone willing to stand across the ring from Kodo Hero is certainly brave. Not cowardly at all. Probably a little bit crazy. And here we see Wicked Wicked coming through the crowd. Wicked Wicked is uh, he's eccentric. He's an individual in every sense of the word. He marches to the beat of his own drum, but as you can hear, that's why these people love him. That's right, that, that double kick drum that he's marching to. It's aggressive, it is wild, and it is crazy. And he has certainly taken on comers of all sizes, all shapes, and styles. And I'm gonna see how he fares against Kodo Hero, a man with a death wish. I think Kota Hero might be suffering more than uh, double kicks. I think we might see twi triple, quadruple. If Wicked Wicked has anything to say about it, we may go into double digits when it comes to the kicks he's going to deliver to Kota. For sir. As we throw it to Pinky for the introductions.
zip code to the wicked side of Riverside? Uh, it's, I don't know. I, I imagine it's like the regular way of Riverside, but maybe with like a six at the end. Is it the same as, as Parts Unknown? All I know is all of my mail gets lost when I send things. Yeah. Are you a pen pals with Wicked Wicked? Uh, he doesn't ever reply. I just get a lot of return to senders. Address unknown and Victor unknown. That is what we need to establish tonight as Kodo Hero being checked for uh, any foreign objects by our official. East Los Lucha management, very, very familiar with the uh, nefarious ways of Hero as of late. You certainly said it. Uh, there is no depth to how low some of these competitors will sink. And Kodo Hero, no stranger to the kendo stick, has brought that in with several bouts. But he seems to be unarmed in, today, in tonight's match. Like, uh, the Kodo Hero might have met his match in the form of Wicked Wicked. Wicked Wicked is so, I don't know, Jesus. Word, but he's so crazy, he's a fry short of a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. He's a screw short of a toolbox, as it were. Something tells me that the, the traditional rule bending, the, the traditional uh, uh, kendo stick-esque interference of Kodo here, it might not phase Wicked Wicked the way it would a usual opponent. You said it, Jordan, there's certainly a lot of that, we'll, we'll just use the word insanity for now, that sort of desperation, that willingness to be put into a predicament of pain and suffering, that sadomasochism, as it were. Wicked Wicked is also not to be underestimated I mean, I mean, let's for call his tolerance to take and distribute pay. Let's call, oh wow, flagrant disrespect and Wicked is not gonna stand for that. But let's call it, like, we see it, Marty. Wicked doesn't care what happens to his own body. He certainly doesn't care what happens to that of his opponents. That is correct. And that sort of disregard for your own safety can lead to some victories. At the very least, it's going to lead to some exciting wrestling action. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Off the ropes, Lucha arm drag. Wicked, Wicked is feeling. Ducks the line from Kota Hero. Up and over, lands on his feet. Extremely slick, one-handed cartwheel there. And look at this, Leapfrog. Excuse me there. Wicked changing direction and traffic very quickly, but Hero right there and ready to play with him. It's tough to tell if this is a professional wrestling match or if it's some kind of superhero comic book the way these two are moving. They bring that kind of intensity, that sort of city-shaking power. Kodo gets behind him for a standing switch, tries to go under, Wicked flips away. Cutter from Wicked, Wicked, and Kota Hero somehow lands on his feet but gets rolled off, no! And stands out of it. Dozy do into the ropes. Wicked, I, I, trust and, me fans, oh my wow. goodness, look at that! Hurricane Rana there. But Kodo still staying on his feet. Maybe a little dizzy, worse for wear. Oh, oh top and drop. my goodness. Followed up with a smack to the Tochas. Fans, I assure you, if you're watching at home on YouTube, your video player is not at two times speed. That is just how damn fast Wicked Wicked moves. Now I kind of want to watch it at two times speed. You wouldn't be able to see it. You'd blink and the match would be over. Look at this. Wicked Wicked lands on his feet. Tip it up, making it look too easy. Finding the leverage, finding that advantageous moment to, to send his body flying. Wicked Wicked, nobody home as Kota Hero rolls out of dodge, but this time Wicked Wicked does the same. Huge uppercut. Both of these competitors have sized each other up very well. They're very familiar with East Los Lucha. Oh, oh a little, head games. A little bit of mind games, patting of the head with those head games, specifically. But just as I was saying, I know that they're no stranger to each other's style. So those little moments, those ways to break up the pattern are going to pay off in spades if you can keep your opponent guessing about what's going to come next instead of thinking they know what's going to come next. When we see these exchange of blows and counters, and we know that these people have read each other very well. It's a game of chess, not checkers, my friend. And right now, a show of respect here between Wicked Wicked and Kota Hero. He should have known better. It's chess, but you can also box in between each move. And right now, Kota Hero, Irish whipping Wicked, or at least attempting it, but Wicked with an Irish whip of his own. Huge and Sedona kick, sending both competitors outside the ring. What momentum there. And Wicked Wicked clearing out the crowd, making sure no one in the audience catches a collateral damage here. I think Wicked Wicked is looking to take to the skies. My goodness, but gets caught by Hero. Oh my golly. And deposited on those ringside chairs. Fans, those are very, very comfortable to sit in 
if you buy a ticket for October 8th, right back here at Don Quixote for Lucha de los Muertos. But I can assure you, they are not comfortable to get your person slammed onto as we take another look. What a great angle of approach, but Wicket is caught and brought right into these chairs, face first. They are, they are firm and supportive to one's backside, but destructive to one's face. Oh, I'll tell you what's destructive to one's face. That's slammed face first into that ringside post. Left a bit of, of a stain of himself there on that ring post. Oh. Danielson-esque kicks there to the chest of Wicked. I don't care if he's wearing a shirt. I don't care if he's wearing that chest protector. That is gonna hurt like hell. Hero resets the count and continues this tour of agony for, for Wicked Wicked as he kicks him right through the first row. Well, the way I see it, take nothing away from Go to Hero. He, he is a master on the ropes. He is an aerial ace, but Wicked Wicked might have his number when it comes to the high flying, when it comes to the acrobatics. So Kota Hero is very smart to spend as much time on the outside as possible where there are no ropes for Wicked Wicked to bounce off of. Wicked may be reckless and dangerous, but Kota Hero is ruthless and meticulous. That's going to be really the, uh, if I had to pick the vocabulary words that are going to define this match, Kota Hero will break Wicked down piece by piece. But there is a chance, if there's one opening, somewhere where, where Wicked can come in from that 90 degree, kind of screwball angle, he's gonna find that opening. Yeah, he's gotta be careful, he's gonna self disqualify here. Wicked, caught up in the middle rope. You are absolutely right, Marty. The difference, as far as I'm concerned, between Wicked Wicked and Kota Hero is that Wicked flies with reckless abandon, as you said. He does it whenever and wherever he can. Kota Hero, he can flip, he can flop, he can fly. He only does so when absolutely necessary. Doesn't do it to please the people, but look at this. Wow. Cartwheel spine buster, followed up with a shining wizard. Wicked can win it. He's got the cover. No. And that sort of creativity, again, Wicked Wicked, that, that cartwheel spine buster, I've never seen anything like that. It's I don't think Kota Hero has ever seen anything about it, therefore he doesn't know how to escape it. That creativity, those, those momentary advantages, gotta press it, and Wicked now with, with designs in his eyes, Kota Hero snatching him out of the sky. Look at the strength from Hero, just depositing him face first. Ooh. And a kick across the skull. Wicked Wicked's gotta be out cold. Like a buzzsaw, right across it. Rolls both legs up. No! Wicked Wicked somehow kicks out, perhaps on instinct alone, Marty. But the audience, right there behind Wicked Wicked, again, a local favorite, a fan favorite here at East Los Lucha. We love that our audience is here with us, that they've made this connection with us. We hope that you can come see us live on October 8th. We're happy that you're watching us now. You gotta think, we have East Los Lucha Cruiserweight Champion, Eli Everfly, defending that title a little, a little bit later on tonight against Paradox. You gotta think he is watching this one very, very closely from the back. Two potential challengers. Uh, yes, for certain. Lateral press. Cruiserweight scene is no slouch in East Los Lucha. You're going to see some high level of competition. I don't believe this is an official number one contendership match, but again, you have to think. A victory here would go a very long way in getting Cody Hero and Wicked Wicked back to that place. Oh, and all and the I, way in with those drop kicks. Or oh, that drop kick, it, it just complete contact. Cover here. Gets the two count. But did not hook the leg. You'll notice that. Cody Hero with a bit of a laxidase, a little lazy cover there. Might have cost him. A little bit of playing with his food, as it were. Cody feeling very confident. I guess we have seen an incredible first half of action tonight. This is our last match before intermission. But then we've already raised the bar so hard. After our intermission today, we're going to see tag team action between 24K and the Doom Barbies. We're going to see, like you said, Eli Everfly defend that cruiserweight championship uh, belt against Paradox. And of course, as decided earlier, we're going to see a triple threat match for the East Los Lucha Heavyweight Championship between Doble Cara, Blood Eagle, and the defending Chris Nast. Oh my goodness, Marty! Wicked Wicked has just kicked things into another gear. He is on fire here, but gets a throat chop directly from Kota Hero. Cuts off every bit of momentum he had now. And Seguri kick from the apron. I think my running down the card got him into a frenzy. He got so excited. Yeah. And oh, oh. missile drop kick. 
These drop kicks are connecting so tight on both of these competitors. It's got to hit like a truck. Almost a shotgun springboard missile drop kick. Too many adjectives to name, <laughs> but it might be exactly what Wicked needs. Clubbing Larry and Kota Hero's done. Kota Hero now just flattened. The Wicked wants to pick him up for something else. He wants to put the nail in the coffin. In the words of Jesse Eisenberg in the iconic 2009 film Zombieland, Wicked looking a double tap, lands on his feet oh. to another cutter. We are right back where we started. No! Wicked no. Wicked, unable to score the victory against Kota Hero. How? And I don't know. And to paraphrase Jesse Eisenberg in another movie, you know what's better than one really solid drop kick to the chest? Or is Justin Timberlake saying that? I don't know. And now Kota Hero very wisely rolling to the outside. Any momentary reprieve he can muster here. He's kicking the fans out of their inside seat. He's just making a mess of these chairs. I thought he wanted one of the chairs for himself to take a breather. And that seems to be what he's going for here. Perhaps if he can even find one. He's so, he's so out of sorts, he can't even figure out how to sit down. But from the outside, wicked, wicked! And he's still lining him up. Asai! Oh, so my gosh! A demolition derby at the Don Quixote. And this is this adrenaline now. When Wicked is fired up like this, when he's done something, you know, reckless and stupid with his body, this is when he needs that cover. He needs to get Kodo in the ring, and he needs to get his body pressed on those shoulders ASAP. Look at this here, my goodness. Wicked, Wicked. He's looking to seal the deal. He's looking to finish this. He's looking to put Kota Hero away. Size him up across the ring. Perhaps took a second too long, sizing up as Kota Hero with a flurry of kicks. Finds his way back in control. Kodo flowing through it now. Tornado DDT. Again, so, so pained. He's unable to capitalize immediately. Finally does. But it's not enough. The tension rising now in this match. Like you said, these competitors, once you spilled it all out on the mat, you need to be able to cover as soon as possible these outside the ring uh, situations can be so dangerous, so damaging to your opponent, but you can't close the deal. You have to get back on top of them as soon as possible. I'll tell you what might close the deal. Kota Hero scaling the top, indeed hoping to get on top of Wicked, but out of nowhere, Wicked, Wicked, finding that second wind, kipping up back to his feet. Wicked, Wicked, quicker than a hiccup. It's that sudden change of fortunes. Wicked, Wicked, quicker than a hiccup. Say that one five times fast. I did it just the once, and I'm gonna leave it at that. But now he's got Hero right where he wants him. Maybe thinking superplex. In a dangerous position for both competitors. That's the, that's the understatement of the century here, but clubbing blows to the gut. Go to Hero, pu pushes Wicked Wicked up, but he lands on his feet off that moonsault. And again, the Enziguri kicks have been the ace in the hole for Wicked in this one. I think he let Koto Hero get lulled into a false sense of security. Perhaps played a bit of proverbial possum. Played a bit of and now, and now Kota Hero, Hero oh! double foot stop from the, the top. Sternum crunching action, and he goes for the pin. Shoulders down. One, two. No! Oh. oh, my God. How is oxygen getting into the body of Wicked Wicked? Right? How is the man not out cold? How, I mean, how is the man not dead after? I don't have an answer. Seemingly, neither does Kota Hero. I'm Googling it right now on WebMD, and it says he dead. That's it, it just says he dead. And at this point, if you're Kota Hero, you start to think, man, I've hit this guy with so much. We're this far in this matchup. What more do I have to do? Do I even have the tools? What do, what do those, those thoughts of self-doubt start to creep in? Uh, he just kind of flexed and, and, and focused his energy. I don't know if it's thoughts anymore or just instinct going through any Wicked, of wicked, the Uracan there, dropping Kota Hero like a sack of potatoes, hooks the leg. Two, but and, uh, oh! Kota Hero getting his foot on the bottom rope. Did not have the energy to kick out after that spinning back fist, but managed to find the foot on the rope, perhaps his only reprieve. Kota Hero, rare for him to pull out a desperate, desperate maneuver like a, a rope break like that. But of course, he will not let anything stand between his himself and victory as he's been on this warpath in these last several shows. Wicked 
no stranger to these high intensity matches. He himself has been a Pandemonium Pro Gen Z champion for two plus years now. He's used to these high stakes matches, these big money matches, and putting it all out on the line. But Koto Hiro is absolutely putting him through his paces. Yeah, but tonight, the title that both of these men are slowly yet surely working their way back towards is the East Los Lucha Cruiserweight Championship. And that is why this one has been the match it has. Fast and furious, neither man giving an inch. They want, they, they need another shot at that Cruiserweight title. The intensity is mounting now as the blows are being traded back and forth. It is Eddie Wood's game, tit for tat, back and forth here. And wicked, wicked it seems, gaining the advantage. It's caught with a boot from Hero, mule kick, and Seguri kick. It's Seguri right across the jaw. But here he comes, another Tornado DDT. Oh, springboard variation, but Kota Hero lands on his feet. Wicked, wicked, able to evade, and a huge, huge knee strike. He's going for that last laugh, but he gets caught. Flipped over. Kota now with the brain buster. And Wicked, Wicked's brains have got to be busted into the cover. And Deep hook. Two and three. Commentators are prone to hyperbole to, to kind of blowing things out of proportion for the for the sake of uh, pushing a brand, pushing an agenda, whatever it is. Sensationalist. Absolutely none necessary here. A show stealing barn burner between Hero and Wicked. Just take another look at this brain buster that finally mercifully brought this one to an end. I was wondering how much more either competitor was gonna be able to put it out on the map. When I saw Wicked go for that last lap elbow and Kodo caught it, I was just, I was praying that this would come to a conclusion soon for our safety and the safety of those around us. Take nothing away from Wicked Wicked, a gutsy, gutsy performance. But tonight it is Kota Hero taking another crucial step back towards that Cruiserweight Championship. The question is, who will be the Cruiserweight Championship? Come Kota Hero's hopeful, uh, eventual challenging for it. Will it be Eli Everfly or will it be Paradox? Very good question, and we look to get that answer when we come back from intermission. And indeed, at this time, we are gonna take a brief, and I mean brief intermission. We will be back with that Cruiserweight Championship match and our Heavyweight Championship match. So fans, stick with us.
back once again, one and all streaming live and free in full on YouTube. This is East Los Lucha 11 Lucha Vacation live from Don Quixote in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Once again, my name is Jordan Castle. His name is Marty Quinn and Marty, not sure if we're in Los Angeles or New Orleans, because right now we're letting the good times roll. Absolutely, 24K on parade now. Have a little bit of a second line through the audience. We're blessed in their presence. Mickey Rose, Michael Hopkins. Excellent, excellent tag team. Well decorated. Moving up and down Southern California into Nevada. West Coast legendary tag team, 24K. And they are going to be up against the Doom Barbies. And I could not be more excited for this second half of wrestling action we've got tonight. Blessed by their presence is, is that it? Blessed, blessed to be in their presence? I mean, I, like I said, I, I like to show my belly. I like to defer to, to anybody stronger than me. Certainly, certainly in their eyes, in yes. their mind, we are blessed by their presence. The. Uh, Don Quixote faithful seem a little uh, less than fond of that idea. All I know is I am having a wonderful time at this show, and I am grateful to see all of the amazing talent that we have seen so far, and all that much more to come in our action-packed second half. Make no mistake about it. Michael Hopkins in the gold boots, Miggy Rose in the black boots, superb athletes, one heck of a tag team, but again, it's, it's, it's the attitude, it's the ego that gets me. Attitude, ego, it's your mindset defines your grind set. And I think that they know that they have to think they're the best. Strong words from a strong team. At least Michael Hopkins is a strong man, having Mickey Rose on his shoulders for that long. Unparalleled confidence from 24K. But will they be able to back it up? Gonna be much easier said than done against their opponents tonight. Come on, Barbie! Let's go party! The thick thighs and jazzercise of Delilah Doom joining forces with Barbie Boy to form Doom Barbies, a true match made in heaven. Doom Barbies with great success at that month's show. Uh, facing against, I believe, Wicked Wicked and got the Kaiju Moizilla, proving themselves as a wonderfully alchemical tag team. You can just see that this is a match made in heaven, like you said. The, it's all pink, it's all kind of spandex, it's all brought to you by Mattel. These two people are on the same wavelength and they could not be a better fit as a tag team duo. I mean, I mean the only thing they're missing, clearly, are the rollerblades. They, they got a down pad otherwise. Rollerblades, I think, technically would count as a foreign object. No. Well, nevertheless, they do not need foreign objects to get the job Woo! done. 
Impeccable split, impeccable timing for Barbie Boy. Dropping it so much. Uh, something tells me Hopkins and Rose cannot, cannot do that. I feel like they've tried. I feel like they choose not to. What is it that little green weirdo from Star Wars said? Do or do not. There is no try. Yes. Enemy. Gyration. A lot of saliva. I don't like it. It's wet and thrusty. Oh, jeez. Much better than Delilah Boy. <laughs> if we had to pick a, a mashup name, a portmanteau name, I think they absolutely nailed it with Doom Boy. And a lot of thrusting from Barbie Boy as well. I, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be even. Somehow there's this PG. We're 24K, maybe PG 13. What was it? I, really maybe it was the saliva. Who's really to say? Barbie Boy and Delilah Doom, the clear crowd favorites here tonight. Of course, their, their, their posted weight, their build weight is, it's rude to ask, so I have to presume they have the size and mass advantage here. It, it's tough to say because uh, there are actually some striking similarities between these teams. They both have a larger member, of course, on Doom Barbie's side, it's Barbie Boy. On 24K side, it's Michael Hopkins. They have a smaller member in the form of Miggy Rose and Delilah Doom, respectively. So, some stark similarities, to be sure. Oh, indeed, and it looks like we're off to some sportsmanship. I would not trust this from 24K. I would not trust this as far as I can throw Michael Hopkins, and that, that is not far. I don't, the Barbie Boy and Delilah Doom have been very accepting, very forgiving and opening people up. And perhaps yeah. it will be their Achilles heel. Irish whip, stereo style from 24K, reverse to do a stereo atomic drop. You are not seeing double as the two step and begins. Big boots from Barbie Boy. A lot of marching already happening in win. And now, be double with a huge elbow. A little mush of Michael Hopkins. And just thrusting his entire body on him. Again, the gyrations. All right, we hit PG-13. Now Barbie Boy in control, sending Hopkins across the ring. In various, Gre Greta Gerwig's Barbie starring Ryan Gosling and, and Margot Robbie, it was, it was also rated PG-13, so I guess that's only seasonally apropos. Fair enough. And much like that movie premiere, they are here to drop bombs on 24K. Oh, clever offense. Not clever Bridges cover over. here. Oh, so close. So do Barbie are clearly the Barbie in this situation? Does that, that make 24K the, uh, the Oppenheimer here? Um, cover once again floats over suggestively. Only a two. I think that's a false dichotomy brought on by marketing. But yes, you're absolutely right. 24K is the Oppenheimer. You're not a Barbenheimer guy, man. I'm not a Barbenheimer guy. Come on. Guy. Tag in. Comes Delilah Doom. Delilah Doom, as alluded to by 24K, cardio for days. And Hook indeed, stopping this train once it gets to yeah, seeing that cardio come on display, Snapmare, hook of the leg. Only a two. Almost like a hip toss Snapmare, like a very quick and Well, and listen, Delilah Doom is much taller than Michael Hopkins. She's at a clear disadvantage in terms of size, as you're seeing here off that scoop slam. She, she, she needs to innovate. She needs to have a little bit of ingenuity, but it's not enough to stop her here from the double team offense of 24K. Wheelbarrow, Bulldog, but nobody home. Nobody there. 
And just like that little green weirdo from Star Wars said, sometimes the size advantage is not as big of a thing. You know, you just gotta look at things. Is that a direct quote? Sometimes direct the quote. size advantage is not as big of a thing. And then, oh, another sling blade there. Down. Sling blade into a fireman's carry. But Mickey Rose able to get him dodge. Shen's Delilah against the ropes. Wheelbarrow, Bulldog, that is how it's done. That Cazadora offense, you cannot take Delilah Doom too lightly as she steps it up. Now using Mickey Rose as a makeshift Stairmaster here. Gotta get your steps in. Oh, now underhooking. Maybe going for a tag team partner and husband, to, uh, excuse me, tag team partner and husband Eli Everfly signature murder on Melrose, but instead opting for the Star 6-9. Oh, her spin on the Tiger Faint kick. Calling you right back. And I cover. I have a feeling victory on its way. And no luck. She can feel it all she wants. She did not get it. And I think that's, we put the Doom Barbies in a very advantageous position in this first exchange. And frequent tags on display here from the Doom Barbies. That is the name of the game. Barbie Boy with Mickey Rose on his shoulders. Uses him as a weapon, a projectile of sorts. But now scoop slamming him onto his own tag partner. Piling them up the bodies. Delilah Doom getting into position now for this tandem offense. Oh my, a, a leg drop and a split leg and drop. Cover. Straddle cover once again, but only a two. Mickey Rose fighting now for breath. Clearly getting the, just the once oh. over. More disrespectful spanking. Is that what you call? I mean, disrespectful spanking, I think this is as clinical of a term as I give it. Mickey Rose's rear is going to be beat red for his family photo a little bit later on tonight. As Doom Barbie with the repeated knees to the gut. Get those knees up. I don't care how pretty those uh, neon green knee pads are, they do not feel good. Drop kick to the back from Doom, that doesn't feel too good either. Now that you've called the knee pads to my attention, I can't stop looking at them and they're hurting my eyes. Oh, oh I no. think that was hurting the throat of Delilah Doom just deposited on the top rope by Mickey Rose. And her neck snapped back so violently. Mickey Rose here pressing the advantage, but. I don't feel good about it at all. Delilah Doom is in a bad way. Yeah, I mean, we've had our fun here talking, making, making Barbie jokes, making movie jokes. I'm not sure if our cameras caught it, but Michael Hopkins using the scooter for added momentum behind the official's back and illegal big boot to Delilah Doom, and Mickey Rose is going to capitalize. Now, he didn't make contact with the scooter, but that is definitely on the questionable end. Of oh! With it's a questionable not, end of legality. It's not that he made contact with the scooter, it's that he used the scooter for added momentum. There's no way Michael Hopkins could run that fast with that much power behind his kick without the scooter. Seems like a gray area, and this is a match all about black, gold, and pink. And that neon yellow. And a little bit of blue, perhaps. Yeah. And Mickey, the gyrations have got to stop. That's just our ring. Again, there's something lascivious about 24K. That's wholesome. When presented by the, the, the Again, they are Oppenheimer, they are our ring. As Delilah Doom tries to fire back with gut shots of her own. Just gets stomped halfway through to Sunday through that spine. And now Doom sent into the corner. This is a, not a great place for her to be for Michael Hopkins' enemy territory. The proverbial wrong side of town. Another scoop slam deposits her on the mat. And now once again going for that wheelbarrow leg drop. This time it lands. Hopkins with a cheap shot to Bobby Boy into the cover. One and two and no such luck. Delilah Doom, again, very hard to put down for the count. That cardio, that heart, as long as that heart is beating and air is going through those lungs, she's always got a fighting chance. Delilah perhaps facing her doom here tonight as, again, the Mattel-laden back just gets stomped by Michael Hopkins. Hopkins, again, just taking his time, sizing Doom up, picking his spots and getting those kicks in, keeping her away from the corner to make that tag. Hopkins clubbing blows to the back of Delilah Doom. And again, I mentioned it about Doom Barbies. It bears repeating with 24K. Got to give the devils their due. Frequent tags, keeping each other fresh. It's the name of the game. Hold on, looking for tandem offense. More 24K, but Delilah Doom may be finding a second wind. And that's, that's, you can never, even as much as you want to isolate your opponent in a tag match, Delilah Doom. Tornado! Wear her down! Tornado DDT using 24K as a stepping stone, my God!
And now she needs that tag. She is fingertips away from Barbie. She's crawling with a little bit of life she has left in her, but Hopkins pulling Barbie Boy down. Let's take another look at this. Oh my. And a Beautiful. German suplex. Oh, we got a cover in real time. No. Deadlifted that German suplex there while we were watching the instant replay. All of the action coming too fast, too furious. Nikki Rose nearly really stole it off that German suplex. Nasty landing on Delilah Doom's neck, which, if you'll remember, was already caught up in that rope a few minutes ago. Stop it with the gyr on the hand and the gyrations. I'm done with it. Just, there are children present. I, I don't care about, I mean, children, sure, I don't want to see that. I know. Now, the headlock cinched in from Miggy Rowe is giving us a one-way ticket to the gun show. In the meantime, Barbie Boy is begging and pleading, trying to will Delilah Doom on with the fans, with the help of the Don Quixote faithful. Will it be enough? She makes her way to her feet. And of course, like I said, Delilah Doom can't be stopped. But Miggy Rose finds an opening and slams her back of the head first into the mat. Yeah, Delilah is now choking her out on that rope once again. Delilah may be facing her doom here tonight. She's isolated in the wrong part of town. Miggy Rose picking her apart piece by piece. Breaking up those little, those, those five counts from the ref just to put her right back into place. And again! Oh, oh! oh! This time she had it scouted. Hopkins went for it again, but got his own nether regions caught up in that ring post. Call that karma, Mike. It's a very clever maneuver, but it only seems to work once. And Doom! Muscling Mickey Rose out of the ring on top of Hopkins. They're sending Rose onto his own tag team partner, and Delilah needs to make a cover. Indeed, she does. Barbie Boy back in with a fury. And tag team strategy. Oh, coming off with two clotheslines. Tag team strategy. It's great to isolate your opponent, but as soon as they make that hot tag, you may have just written your own destiny because now Barbie Boy has vengeance in his eyes. There's the only thing Barbie Boy loves more than a huge blowout dream house party with choreographed dance numbers, and that is kicking the ever-loving you-know-what out of 24K. Ducks the shot. Hopkins got his own man once again. Spectacular dodging there from Barbie Boy. Starlight oh! Express. That tandem offense now from the Doom Barbies. We're seeing a new level of cohesion. Look at the night sky, you might see it. The stars are blonde. And two and no! Double. Barbie Boy has won several matches with that exact maneuver. Mickey Rose with the surprise kick out. Well, not only that, the stars are blonde combined with the Starlight Express. And now a little spanking cheer. I think that's what they need to do is break him down, like, you know, emotionally. Oh, oh wow. Hold on. Gory style, just, oh! Stereo gory bomb here. Barbie Boy looking to capitalize. Two and still not enough. Miggy Rose, my boy, just let it, let it go. That's your I, boy. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm saying my my boy. Like, please, I'm taking care of my boy. What have they done to my boy? If this match goes on much longer, Mickey Rose is going to be a wet splat on the pavement. After all the hell, 24K put him through Doom Barbie. Uh, Doom Barbie's not gonna, they're not gonna let him get away that easily, but Mickey Rose sending Barbie Boy into his tag partner, tags in his tag partner, Michael Hopkins. Setting themselves up for some uh, tandem offense now. Delilah Doom in a bad way, coming off that Come on, kissing her, oh. super kicking her. This is sick. Cannot spend this time gyrating, boys. And indeed, you're gonna pay for it. A flurry of forearms and slaps from Barbie Boy. Following it up with a dream house. Oh! But caught with the tandem Russian leg sweep. This has got to be it. This is, oh my goodness. Broken up at the last possible second by Delilah Doom. You got to think if Delilah didn't pick her spot perfectly, Barbie, Barbie Boy would be down for the count. I, again, I don't know if there's decisions being made or just instincts being activated. I think Delilah heard the count, knew her partner was in trouble, and just did, just flinched and reacted. Those are more muscle spasms than coherent thoughts. Delilah Doom, a veteran of nearly a decade, former Santino Brothers inner city champion, the only woman to win both SoCal Women's Wrestler of the Year and Tag Team Wrestler of the Year consecutively. I mean, I mean, she knows her way around a professional wrestling ring, suffice it to say. For certain. And now we're seeing both teams exchanging these blows in time. And it seems as if Doom Barbie's getting the better of them here. 
but this one has just become an absolute slugfest. Oh, oh, they're getting those heart rates up. They're coming off the ropes. Double super kick once again. Oh, and 24K calling for the end. Are we going to see it, Marty? They are in sync. Oh, or perhaps oh, not. My. Barbie Boy able to evade, and are we going to see it? Delilah with the Stunt Dog Millionaire in the dream house off the ropes. Delilah out to the outside. Lope Suicida lands on Miggy Rose, and now oh. Fireman's carry from Barbie Here Boy. Here it is again. Delilah Doom on the top. Oh. The Starlight Express. And well, that's got to be all. That's got to be all. Three. Suffice it to say, my friend, Doom Barbies are indeed Kenoff. You said it, Jordan. Their chemistry is outstanding. Their job is win. They have made the Don Quixote their proverbial and perpetual mojo dojo casa house here tonight. And as these fans come alive, we're having a house party. Hell of a victory for Doom Barbie here. Of course, everyone is welcome in the dream house. And Barbie Boy expands this victorious 2023 that he has had in a great tag team partnership with Delilah Doom. The chemistry could not be better. It's not just the outfits when it comes to how in sync they are, my friend. It is in the ring as well. It is in the ring in spades. Huge victory against 24K, stopping every nefarious bending and breaking of the rules at every possible turn. You can just tell their world, world views really line up. <laughs> and we've got more to come as we head on to the last two matches, our main events here. We have title defenses. First, we are going to see the- I'm sorry, I, I think, look, look, this is picture perfect. I'm sorry to cut you off, but these two are, these, these two are specimens. They are specimens and they are well loved by the fans. Go ahead, my friend. Uh, that's quite all right. We've got this East Coast Lucha Cruiserweight Championship match coming up next. We're going to see Eli Everfly defend the championship against Paradox. And of course, our main event, a triple threat, no DQ match. Chris Nasty is defending against both Blood Eagle and Avenging Dolce Cara. We've got so much more to come. We're going to send it over to Pinky Santino to oh, introduce. Hold on. Oh. That's, that, that's, that's Enoch the Light. What? <laughs> Champion. 
AWS State Championship winner just last night. Has defeated names like, like Brian Kendrick. He has been all over this state, several states. Is a fine wrestler, and if Enoch says that he has found the Achilles heel for Eli Everfly, I think Eli has reason to be afraid. Paradox, no doubt, a very, very impressive athlete, but I just want to point out, Enoch the Enlightened is wearing light-up suspenders. Who the hell wears light-up suspenders? Uh, the sort of person who wears strawberries on their shirt, oh, gold bow tie. That, that is a fashion faux pas, to say the least. But again, this is no fashion show. This is a professional wrestling match, and as much as I might detest the guy, might be the Weasley mind of Enoch the Enlightened, might be exactly what Paradox needs to unseat arguably the most dominant champion in company history, La Mosca himself. I don't speak French, but I have to assume that faux pas being French means fancy. We, 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 no, 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 not at all. Once again, the bass has dropped, and I am feeling electrified and tingled. Oh, I'm sitting on a wire. Hey, Eli Everfly, of course, unseated Dakota Hero for the East Coast Lucha Cruiserweight Championship in a death match this past October. Since then, has unseated, or shall I say, has overthrown all challengers. But tonight, arguably, with the last minute insertion of Enoch the Lightning, a proverbial monkey wrench, maybe his biggest challenge to date. As you know, managers can be an X Factor when they're at ringside. Whether or not they actually physically get involved in a match, which happens sometimes. I, I, let, me, let me just say this, Enoch the Enlightened, he will stoop to any low. I almost guarantee you he will try to insert himself this way. Whether or not that happens, a manager can't be that X Factor, that game changer. Maybe they've got a, a bit of advice or just their presence can throw off the game of someone. We'll see if Eli Everfly is unflappable as he's proven so far. Eli Everfly, the 2017 SoCal Wrestler of the Year. A year later, pin The Miz, Mike Mazanin on SmackDown on national television. And in the half decade since, has firmly established himself as an ace, not just of Southern California, not just of independent wrestling, but of professional wrestling as a whole. And certainly in the world of Southern California wrestling, we're gonna go to Pinky Santino for the introduction. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, theatrics when it comes to the entrance and the introduction of Eli Everfly, the mask, the green tongue, but if you've never seen this man wrestle before, suffice it to say, he is not just called the fly because of those aesthetics. This man can fly around the ring unlike anything you've ever seen. Truly, the eccentricities are not the only reason why he's earned that name. 
but I think that we're in for you're in for a surprise if you want to limit him to just being a high flyer, a quick mover, a ride on his feet kind of guy. Because Eli Everfly will take it to that deranged second place. He is also reckless with his body. He's courageous when he's facing challenges above and beyond his normal weight class. And I'm excited to see how he faces off against Paradox, who Enoch says is like a younger, faster, stronger version of himself. Of Enoch or of Eli? Of Eli. Oh, thank goodness, because if it was a younger version of Enoch, then this would be a very short match. I still said faster and stronger, but yeah, you're probably right. Can cut the tension with a knife. Show of respect, perhaps. Uh... Wow, maybe Sucker and Eli in here. Fast and furious, this action. Too quick to call, let alone watch. A standing Holy shooting star moly. press, but nobody home. Look at the speed and the quickness on Paradox. And now he's back to attention. You gotta wonder if this uh, quote unquote respect from Paradox is maybe a little facetious there. Again, lands on his feet off that Hurricane Every piece of signature Eli Everfly offense in the early going Paradox has had an answer for, but perhaps that trend ends now. Perhaps, yes, but Paradox, very interesting to watch in the ring. If you look at his movements, he's got a stiff. Oh, wait, 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 wait for the Samoan drop, but instead got caught with a crucifix ball. A stiff. <laughs> crucifix bomb is what he just received. But he has this way, this almost herky-jerky way of moving where it's it's fluid and then he's quickly very rigid and kind of angular. It's very fascinating to watch. Fascinating to watch, but no doubt painful to watch if you're Eli Everfly. Springboard, but gets caught by Enoch the Enlightened. Grab the heels and now the Tiger faint kick off the distraction. Come on! Coming from the, oh, my. Spiking Eli Everfly neck first on that rig apron. Give me a break. You said it in the early going, if a, a manager from the outside has any physical insertion, if, if, if. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Less than a minute into this contest, and he knocked the enlightened, already involving himself physically. I was trying to see over the monitor, and oh my gosh, look at that. The way Paradox just spikes Eli's skull into the corner of the, of the mat there. Coming off that second row. And I mean, this might be the beginning of the end for Eli Everfly. The neck, both on the apron and then spilling to the outside of that hard concrete floor. Fans, we can't see. There's no padding at ringside. There's, there's, no, there's no fluffy cushioning for anyone landing on the outside. It is a hard linoleum floor, and Eli Everfly just caught every single inch of it. And may do so again off the suplex. Paradox looking almost relaxed in his body language as he stalks around the, uh, the ring. Eli, very, very intense. He's kind of got yeah, that hunched over, animalistic look. The paradox, just there's a, there's a calmness to it. It's, it's eerie. It's eerie. Uh, thank you. And now paradox beckoning for the fans to leave. This could only mean bad things for Eli. Oh, come on, suckering uh, the people in, making a move for no good reason. Speaks to the character of Paradox, the only kind of scum of the earth that would associate themselves with that no good, you know what, Enoch the Enlightened. Oh, again, these unorthodox elbow drops, the way he that goes, press. Himself, goes for the cover, yeah. Only two. Very lackadaisical cover. You gotta think Paradox knew he wasn't gonna get the victory there because he wanted to cover Eli Everfly as he's doing again to make him expend energy, another cover. And a bridge by Eli Everfly. Very, very, very wise. And a shot to the stomach there to get the air out of him. Very smart from Eli to opt for that bridge. Instead, it'll take a little, little less air out of you than traditional kick out. Traditionally, throwing your arm upward for that kind of speed and ferocity. Now Paradox sees the, the, the weakness, the opening now. He has an advantage to press. And Paradox, I, 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 if I had to pick somebody, he's kind of reminded me really of uh, other things from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In the way that, like, there's no music, there's no fanfare to what he's doing. He's just laying in a beat in, and here comes Eli Everfly. Looking for the sunset flip. If he's Leatherface, call Eli the Survivor Girl. And again, the physical insertion of Enoch the Enlightened. Oh! Our official, finally! Charlie Wu! But Michael. he doesn't realize there's a cover! And a, a little too little, a little too late. Still good on him for restoring order by whatever means necessary, by breaking up that, that handhold. 
I mean, I, I gotta be honest, I, I, I'm not one to argue with referee Charlie Wu, one of the best in the game, as are all of our officials here at East Los Lucha, but why on earth has Enoch the Enlightened not been ejected here? Again, that managerial license will buy you a lot of leeway, but you're, you're very right, he is skating on thin, thin ice. As and he's, he's and pressing now, his luck. Now I think Paradox might be even fish hooking. Oh my Eli god, he, Everfly. he is the green mouth of Eli Everfly just getting torn asunder here by Paradox. Great, great catch. Does he have his fingers in or is he just ripping at the cheeks? Either way, unpleasant. Oh, he's, he's gonna tear the guy's tear the guy's lips off here. What a horrifying visage. You, I mean you, me, you 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 mentioned Leatherface talking about maiming of a human being here, but Eli Everfly manages to find a way out of dodge. Everfly might be in the market for a new skin mask if his face gets distorted and stretched out of, out of possession. He might need to wear that La Mosca entrance mask in everyday life. That would have a lot of questions brought up at the grocery store. Ow! That's exactly what the Cruiserweight Championship is worth to Eli Everfly. He is willing to sacrifice life and limb to retain that title, and he might have to sacrifice both here against Paradox. So again, has got to be careful he doesn't get himself disqualified. Paradox again looking at, you can tell he sees the And ball. again, Enoch the Enlightened, the cheap shot to Everfly. Come on. Enoch, I just see him in the audience over there. He's sitting for a while I don't know what you he's possibly. You are a, you are, you are a coward, man. Come I'm not on. a coward. I honestly did, I missed that one. I was looking out for I, I could be a referee. Now, Eli Everfly is going to make Paradox look elsewhere, but instead, getting hoisted up in the Gorilla Press Slam, really landing. No! He does not! Well, first into a DDT. That impressive power of Paradox. He can, oh, oh, cover! Now, pull one leg. Oh. Eli capitalizes just a little too late. He was able to make the cover, but he gave Paradox a few too many seconds to recuperate. Paradox, you can tell that he looks at a match at a, at a, 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 a skew angle, like a Dutch angle or something. He's not coming at this. Garanagi oh. from Paradox. With the same sort of attitude as a lot of other competitors. And, and it's, it's like watching a shark stock its prey. And indeed, Paradox smelling blood in the water, drops the leg, hooks Eli's. And a comfortable looking pinning attempt. Comfortable for Paradox, no doubt yeah, comfortable for Eli. Never comfortable when you have someone's leg around your throat. And I gotta say, we, we have seen bursts and spurts of energy from the champion, but this one has really been all the challenging. Paradox now in business mode. Scaling to the, the top. Come off. Looking to finish this one off, perhaps. Sees his prey before him. Off the road. Oh, no water in the pool. Went for the Swanton Bomb, but spent a little too much time. Eli Everfly saw it coming, and now it is up to La Mosca, the Cruiserweight Champion, to try to find a way back in this thing. Both men down. He knocked the Enlightened, now hoping to get his money's worth on his investment. And of course, a in despair. If this match does end in a doubles in a double count out, easy for me to say, per champion's advantage, Eli would retain the cruiserweight title. But after this, if there's such a personal issue with Enoch the Enlightened, you know that is not the way he wants to win this one. Oh, for certain. I don't think Eli, Enoch would give up at this point. He'd send more goons after him. And of course, any champion, it's great to get the win, but it's even better when you have a, a record you can be proud of. And Eli Everfly hoping to add another W to that record sent into the ropes. Wheel Barrow Stunner. Excellent Casadora offense. The Lucha Libre background. And like you said, Eli Everfly, he can fly. Springboard cutter indeed, he can fly, and you just saw it, but he has to crawl. He has to make the cover. And is it enough? It is not. He can fly. He can do the Lucha Libre things. He knows. Ground holds submissions. He is a striker. He is absolutely a full package player. But I, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but Enoch the Enlightened just pulled Paradox outside of the ring. Are they, are, they, are, they, are they calling it quits here? What's going on? I think he might just have some words of encouragement here as Eli Everfly. Well, he oh! just put himself in the splash zone and call that karma. The glasses fly right off the face of Enoch the Enlightened. And it couldn't happen to a nicer guy.
Paradox, not one to be dissuaded. Moves oh. all about the top, lands on his feet, gets caught with a super kick from Eli. Eli now finding that opening. Maybe he'll pay him back just in kind there. These are two, like we said, very well paired off opponents. Enoch has picked somebody who's like a dark reflection of Eli Everfly. A shadow cell, the bizarro Eli Everfly. But now perhaps you're right, Marty. Eli saying, you want a moonsault? That's how it's done. Gorgeous moonsault from the second row. Acai, Beautiful arc. Acai variation. But Eli Everfly has to capitalize. The only way he can win this one is in the ring as we take another look at that moonsault. And I'm not sure if our cameras caught it, but in real time, I think Eli Everfly just gave uh, Enoch the enlightened a face full of beer. Again, the camera, I didn't see it. The camera, I didn't, I don't know. And I'm not Charlie Wu, so it's not important for me to see that. Again, Enoch the Enlightened is not a registered competitor. He can hit him with beer all he wants. That is fair, yes. And I would like to see it, but I would like to see Eli retain more. Look at the leg. Uh, oh. No. And Eli Everfly, he has, he has had a gutsy, gutsy defense thus far. He has taken everything that not one, but two men have to throw at him. And he has not just survived, but thrived, and yet still, Paradox finding it within himself to kick out. These championship matches, whether you're fighting to take the title or to defend that title, it escalates everything. It brings up a level of pride and determination that you don't normally see. And Eli Everfly is here to rise to the occasion. Maybe thinking murder on Melrose, butterflies the arms, but Paradox able to evade. Oh, kick to the gut. the apocalypse. Butterfly of his own. Two quick kicks. Left and right, a back fist from Everfly. But again, gets caught by Paradox. Forearm to the face, chop to the chest, elbow to the chin. Another chop for good measure, double tapping him there. Teeing off on Eli Everfly. Irish whip there gets reversed by Everfly. Bounces off the rope, wow. clubbing, slingshot lariat. What a rebound from Paradox. Now he's getting himself psyched up. He's getting pumped. He's trying to plan out his next move. I think he wants to hit that Apocalypse pile driver. We might be seeing a new Cruiserweight champion. We talk about the similarities between oh. these two men. Everfly with the twisting escape goes Wheel in through. Wheelbarrow sunset flip could be enough though. No. Oh my God, on the corner of your screen, you saw it. He knocked the enlightened clock and Eli Everfly, I, I believe, was that, was that with the championship? Was that with the chair? I, I didn't catch what it was, but it's, it's throwing the champion for a loop here. As far as I can tell, Enoch is still looking for his glasses. I don't know what he's... Spine oh, Buster Powerball! A cover attempt. New and champ! Chest. No! Paradox putting in a great show. Excellent, powerful moves here. It's easy to perform excellent, powerful moves when you're getting assistance from the championship belt as wielded by Enoch the Enlightened. Just say it. Seems very cut and dry from where you're sitting, but I know that wrestling is a sweet science with a lot of subtleties and a lot of shifting uh, positions at all times. And I don't. You can use all you can use all the fancy wordplay you want. All right. The fact of the matter is that Paradox, with with the corner man Enoch the Enlightened, are trying to screw Eli Everfly out of that cruiserweight championship. And as the challenger scales to the top, they may just get the job done. He's fluffing that top turnbuckle, trying to make a nice smooth standing position. If he can get his footing where he needs it to be, he can come crashing down and walk out of here with a new title. But Everfly seemingly out of nowhere finds that second gust. That rolling heel kick, that bad taste kick. And now he's got Paradox right where he wants him. Look at the balance from Everfly. Everfly very much at home on the top row. But so Paradox is, walks it off. So is Paradox landing on his feet. Everfly not expecting to see the challenger staring him right back. As he turns around, he's up for a twisting suplex of maneuver. We gotta have a new cruiserweight champion. Enoch the Enlightened has done it. He screwed Everfly. No! Oh, little free holders. Oh my, oh my goodness. Eli Everfly staying in this thing, Marty. That, it's so close. I do not blame Paradox for arguing with Charlie Wu. Charlie Wu, infallible. His word is law. But that hand was so close to the mat. Paradox just raining them. Bringing those hands down close yeah. to Eli's face. Those ham hocks directly into the face of Babaska. Paradox here. You, you, 
could almost see the gears turning through that mask. You can almost see him trying to formulate what he has to do next to take and, out La Mosca. And that's where a manager comes in handy. Somebody at ringside who can say, execute plan C, you know, something really clever like that. Yeah, that or cracking it upside the skull with a championship belt behind the referee's back. A myriad of ways that a, a manager could be useful. Box now has Eli right where he wants him. Bounces off the ropes into a oh. huge big boot. Yeah, we see it, Enoch. Thank you. And now posting Everfly up into the danger zone. This is not where you want to be if you're the champion. It's a lethal place for either one of these competitors. Both of these men so at home in the high-flying zone. This could go either way. Looks like Everfly's trying to tie his leg around the rope to avoid. Oh my goodness, it's a Spanish fly! Spanish fly from the fly. One, two, three, Eli retains. Absolutely proved correct here tonight. Withstanding the onslaught of Paradox, withstanding the interference of Enoch the Enlightened, nearly a full calendar year under his belt as Cruiserweight Champion, and showing absolutely no sign of stopping. Absolutely right. He picked up the belt in October of last year. At our next show, October 8th, Lucha de los Muertos. We hope to see you there, but we've still got one more incredible, exciting, breathtaking match coming up for you in just a moment as we watch Eli Everfly celebrate the success of the Prince of the Cruiserweight Championship. We just saw the Cruiserweight Championship be defended. I think it's about time we see the Heavyweight Championship be defended. It's for all the marbles, Chris Nasty, with his first defense against the man who he stole the championship from in Doble Cara, and the added monkey wrench in the form of Blood Eagle. Triple threat action, no disqualification. Something has got to give. Security now escorting Enox and Paradox out of the door. Good, get him out of there. I think it's for their sake. The crowd is not happy. Kick-ass Lucha. You had the best seat in the house for that super Libre matchup where Chris Nasty dethroned Doble Cara. Can, can you attest to the brutality of that contest? I've seen a lot of vicious wrestling matches in my day. I've seen a lot of them in person, but I will definitely say that Super Libre made me sick to my stomach. There was some violence that I was not expecting to see, some, some unique bloodshed techniques. And I'm amazed to see Bill Becara even able to compete after last month's show. And you can tell that he has a score to settle and wants to take a bite out of Chris Nasty after what he did. Bite metaphorically or literally? I mean, this is also a no DQ match. Yeah. I would not put it past any of these competitors to go below the belt to find some unique offense. Well, and just think about that. 
Super Libre, available to watch for free on this very same YouTube channel, fans, was as brutal as it was. Now, Doble Kata is a man with nothing to lose. How much more dangerous is this match gonna be, knowing just that? Well, the difference is between nothing to lose and everything to lose. I think he's got a new lease on life after being stripped of that belt. But tonight, it's not just the Lucha scumbag and the reigning defending East Los Lucha heavyweight champion he has to contend with. As we saw earlier on tonight, it's the man he was originally scheduled to face in number one contendership action. He said, hey, if you're skipping the line, buddy, so am I. The one, the only, Blood Eagle. Just this morning, Blood Eagle thought that maybe he could go to sleep tonight as a number one competitor, but there is a chance he could be leaving this building with heavyweight championship gold over his shoulder. At that the very stakes have changed. At that very same show, Kick-Ass Lucha, volume 10, available to watch free on our YouTube right now. Blood Eagle made his East Los Lucha debut in a show-stealing matchup, pick out a victory against Bamboo. That was a hell of a match. That was maybe my favorite of the last show. Bamboo, a beloved wrestler here at East Los Lucha. Blood Eagle stretched him out and just made him beg for mercy. We saw so much promise out of that competitor. It's no doubt in my mind that he is on a fast track to head heavyweight championship one way or the other. Take nothing away from Bamboo, a fantastic athlete. But I think Doble Gara and Chris Nasty are a little bit of a different challenge for Blood Eagle. Blood Eagle certainly brings in a different type of combat to this match. What we saw last month against uh, Doble Gara and Chris Nasty, Sure, it was vicious. They found a lot of creative ways to get at each other. Blood Eagle is so much muscle, so much man, so much mayhem. He is a weapon in and of himself. And to introduce that into the ring is going to cause all sorts of complications. For Chris Nasty, who thought he had the night off. Yeah, he thought that uh, Volume 11 Lucha Vacation was going to become a literal vacation for him. Instead, it's become Lucha Overtime. Chris Nasty, someone who has more than lived up to that nickname, Lucha Scumbag. Emphasis on the scumbag in recent months. I like to emphasize the Lucha. That's just more for phonetic, for, for, for branding style. purposes. Sure. sure. Meter, like a poetic meter. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like poetry, it rhymes. Yes. Yeah. Chris Nasty, of course, back at Volume 9, Lucha Hangover, defeating Big Dick Hoss Hog. Settling a score, gaining revenge against the man who took him out of action that very same night and turning his back on Doble Cara. That is what brought us to volume 10, Kick-Ass Lucha, where he won that championship. But you can see the fire in his belly coming out to the ring with that championship belt. He has absolutely wanted this. He's wanted to be in this position. You can tell he doesn't want to let it go.
Chris Nasty's heavyweight championship reign go down in history as a flash in the pan? Or is this just the beginning of the era of the Lucha Scumbag? Tonight, we find out. Excellent, excellent question. His title is already at such risk, having to fend off two competitors here. And it will be a great first victory for him if he can walk away with that title. It will also be a fabulous return to the championship for Don't Make Car if he's successful. And it will be a meteoric ascent for Blood Eagle, who just debuted last show and find, would find himself in the championship match. There is so much at stake here. I cannot wait to see how all of this unfolds. And everybody here is a threat. Hold on, it seems like Blood Eagle and Doble Cara, perhaps, uh, Blood Eagle I should say, perhaps trying to convince Doble Cara for a double team here on Chris Nasty. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I mean, an argument could be made that nobody is your friend in a triple threat match like this. Well, sir, absolutely. You can betray anyone any second. You know, the interesting thing, the interesting thing about these triple threat matches, these trios matches, is, is that there are temporary alliances. Keyword, temporary. You might team with Blood Eagle if you're Doble Cata. You might team with Doble Cata if you're Blood Eagle, but you know it's not gonna last. And indeed, it's not lasting here, as Blood Eagle sent against the ropes, but catches Doble Cata with a huge shoulder. Close exchange between all parties so far. Blood Eagle looks to be in the captain seat starting off. Now Blood Eagle Caught across the skull with a super kick from Nasty. Did you hear that? That was thunderous and lightning. And Nasty's not done. Wow! Over the top! And lands on his feet. Everything coming up Millhouse for Chris Nasty. Listen, I, I, I don't like Chris Nasty personally. That much is clear. But I mean, to, to disregard his athletic prowess is, is a fool's errand. Sending Ooh. Blood Eagle into that post and careening into our fans at ringside here. Very wisely focusing on Doble Cara alone, isolating the ring to him in one of his two challenges. Doble Cara, again, like a snake in the grass, he has impure thoughts about what he wants to do to Chris Nasty here. That we can tell at the Super Lucha last show, he had a lot of sinister plans. Oh, quick turnaround from Chris Nasty with a spinning lariat. And now Doble Cara is down, maybe for a cover. No, Chris nope. Nasty instead looking to administer more punishment or instead send Doble Cara outside the ring. But don't look behind you, Chris. You might not like the view. And now Nasty and Blood Eagle, the two competitors standing in the ring. Blood Eagle looks to hip toss him, but gets it reversed. Instead gets a Lucha arm drag from the Lucha scumbag. Oh my goodness, Chris ascending Blood Eagle like a jungle gym. Same metaphor I thought of. And now, wow! Great minds Excellent. think alike, and it is the mind of Blood Eagle that just got Tornado DDT. A beautiful springboard off that top rope, almost like an Arabian press style DDT. Chris Nasty, Lucha Scumbag, very inventive, very innovative. Nothing innovative about a super kick to the gut, but it is certainly effective. Blood Eagle and Doble Cara are finally teaming up, and it is nothing good for Chris Nasty. Stereo hip toss, stereo sit out drop kick. Just those kicks to the bread basket would be enough to have cover. him vomiting blood. And a cover, but of course, Doble Cara is not going to let him have it that easy. Cover. He wants it for himself. Yeah, again, this is what you mentioned, those temporary alliances. You can team together for a move or two for, for, a, for a flurry of moves against the champion, but it, it's all going to break down before it really begins. You've got to keep your head on a swivel. That, that fist that's punching right alongside oh, could my. be an elbow one second later. God, I, I think the head of Doble Gata might be on a swivel after that. It might be off a swivel, excuse me. That chop came right through my headphones. It was a piercing sound. Oh! That one sounded like a gunshot. There is violence aplenty happening in this ring right now. Don't make Cara down to one knee. You know, I feel like traditionally with Lucha Libre, there's sort of a stereotype of these smaller, maybe, maybe more frail individuals, the, the cruiserweight type wrestlers, if you will. Doble Cara and, and Blood Eagle are the alpha males of Lucha Libre professional wrestling. Suffice it to say, for certain. Absolute, absolute mastodons. Yeah. When Blood Eagle is the epitome of that, of that description, he is a meat mountain. He is a big old beef factory. He just sent 
Nearly 300 pounds of body into Dope Gata, ducks the shot. Face lock into a German suplex. German suplex clamps Dope Gata vertically, but, but now he's back with a fire in his belly. Back suplex there, but again, Blood Eagle up to his feet immediately. What the hell are these guys made of? Finally, the double clothesline takes him down. Warriors just screaming their bloody oaths at one another. And Chris, Chris Nasty's Nasty, gonna of pick, course pick the bones. That is that opportunist nature. But you know what? Opportunity knocks, baby. You better answer. Th this is a champion. This is the prestigious champion that we're all so honored to be in the presence of. The championship takes many forms, and that quick thinking is just as important as anything else. That creativity is necessary. As I was saying at the Super, uh, Super Lucha last show, Doble Cara hadn't played some mind games. He had somebody else come out doing his entrance as he came up for a sneak attack on Chris Nasty to press the advantage. He has, he's thinking about this in five dimensions. And just like in a three-way match, you gotta keep your head on a swivel, you gotta look out for Doble Cara, Chris Nasty, Blood Eagle, and then Doble Cara's other ill intentions sneaking up from behind. Nothing sneaky about this offense here. Doble Cara looking Chris Nasty dead in the eyes as he chops the flesh off his chest. One for Blood Eagle, two of these men exchanging chops, a proverbial bar fight between these three, and all of the competitors are down. A merry-go-round of chopping ends with a three-way head-on collision of boots to chest. I never thought a merry-go-round would be this damn painful. I have never been on a merry-go-round. Have you heard that music? As painful as it can be, something tells me I'd rather listen to that music on loop for hours and hours and hours. And I'd love to listen to this crowd chanting, this is awesome, as it fades out as I call attention. Ex now excellent, excellent. I like the segue, nevertheless. <laughs> My point is I'd rather listen to the music than receive this offense, but Nasty looking to steal it, perhaps, transitioning. Oh. I thought he was going for a cloverleaf, but no. He's going for a real dirty grab. He's, he's, he's trying to muscle Doble kind of up, but the man's just too big. It ain't pretty, but it was effective. Power bomb broken oh. up by Blood Eagle. A hell of a maneuver from Chris Nasty. If he could have been a little bit faster, he might have been able to close that deal, but Blood Eagle was there to break it up, and now is pressing the advantage himself. Nasty there, leap oh. into the waiting arms of Blood Eagle. Fireman's carry down Valley Driver. Into the turnbuckles, though. That's. That's a Death Valley off-road driver, and he takes it into a ditch. Oh, my oh. goodness. The, the, well, the pinball was broken up, but not in the traditional sense. Doble got a manhandling the referee. Usually, that would call for a disqualification. Well, but again, no disqualifications. We've seen him pull the other competitors off by the ankle. Do you really want to tug Bloody Eagle at 300 pounds, or do you just want to grab the referee's I don't want to like be in the same room as Bloody Eagle, let alone tug him. Now you're starting to see things my way, a cowardly way. Doble got it. It's nasty. Oh, is Doble Cara, but finds his mark on, on uh, Blood Eagle. And now Doble Cara taking advantage. Waste lock on Nasty Nasty, one of his own. Sends Doble Cara into the ropes, but Cara sends Nasty outside the ring. And now this is all Doble Cara. It's that quick thinking, that quick drop down. Now Doble Cara stands tall in the ring and uses that advantage from up high to, oh! Went for the tope suicida, but instead got a face full of chair. I mentioned it earlier, very comfortable to sit in. If you join us on October 8th for Lucha de los Muertos, not so comfortable to get cracked in the skull with, and not so comfortable to get thrown into. Take another look at this. Yeah, they don't call it a tope easy safe thing. <laughs> And again, it's a tope suicida even if you land it perfectly. Correct. Let alone get cracked in the skull with a chair. Blood Eagle now trading elbow strikes with Chris Nasty. It, it seems like Doble Cara is escaping, trying to find a, a, a moment of reprieve, perhaps. Doble Cara, wise move to size up both of these competitors. Blood Eagle, I mean, you mentioned Texas Chainsaw Massacre a little bit earlier on tonight. Blood Eagle truly like a horror movie villain stalking his prey here, Marty. Yeah. He's got that oh kind my, of unflinching. Oh my, oh my god. Oh boy. Don't don't play Kata is atop the balcony. He's not gonna he's not gonna do this. How did he get up there? No! Doble, come on! The no oh, the insanity! Viva La East Los Lucha! Goodness gracious! 
folks, you absolutely want to be here for this. Coming off of that balcony and to crashing into everybody. It's a car wreck down there in this three-way match. Doble Cara, without hyperbole, risking his life to win back the heavyweight championship. That is how much that title belt means to Doble Cara. Careers are cut short with moves like that, but what is a career unless you can fill it with these accolades and these championship titles? And here comes Doble Cara looking to reclaim what's his. Can he go for the cover? He's not done, he's looking to fly. Doble Cara ascending to the top. Looking a, a little ginger on that left leg and probably feeling a little ginger in that face after getting struck by Blood Eagle. Blood Eagle rising up from the ashes of that crash landing. No, Blood, Blood, Blood Eagle's Blood not picking he... superplex here. To, to the outside. To the, outside. The, the people in those chairs are already seeing so much carnage. There will be no chairs to sit in. They will be, they will be but dust. And Chris oh, no. Nasty, he knows oh, no. this. Trying to kill two birds with one stone. Changing the direction and momentum of everything. And now Nasty, we're gonna steal it once again. Oh, oh, he, he's, got, he's trying to get him up. He's looking, he's looking for Mustache Mountain. Oh my, there it is. Mustache Can Mountain. Up? Can he get the win? Chris Nasty retains. It. Blood Eagle. Superplex Tower of Doom, opening it up for Chris Nasty to lay nut, mustache mountain right on Doble Cara and get that three count while his fingertips were just a millimeter away from a rope break. Chris Nasty once again eking out a victory out of mere defeat. Dave, you can, you can say he cheated, you can say he, he stole and manipulated his way there, but a pin is a pin and Chris Nasty retains the championship. A pin is a pin and a win is a win. Deja vu, Marty. Chris Nasty saying that he told us, he told us all and indeed, gotta give the devil his due. Nasty retains for the second time this summer, Chris Nasty has pinned Doble Cara in Don Quixote.
Scumbag. He got the pin, he got the win, and now he's going home. I don't blame him one second. He went through a gauntlet tonight. Fans, we will be back in Don Quixote, back streaming live and free in full on YouTube on October 8th when East Los Lucha presents Volume 12, Lucha de los Huertos. <laughs> Until then, for Marty Quinn, my name is Ben Jordan Castle. We thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.